Tarkov is the best arcade shooter of the past six years. Battlestate truly knows what they're doing with this one. I mean, their meta-understanding of the game and, and the player base is evident, yet so few people really get it. Allow me to enlighten the plebeians and the lukewarm IQs in the room with this review of Escape from Tarkov in 2023. PSG really knocked the marketing out of the park with this one, and people don't give them enough credit for this. Who would want another arcade shooter in a world with Battlefield and Call of Duty? For tonight, what's just one more arcade shooter? Exactly, no one. <laughs> Blamo. So BSG decided to market it as, quote, hardcore and, quote, tactical. And this was in an attempt to get all the little LARPers drooling. The operator Drewskis, the cleans, the the people who live in Texas and wear, you know, tactical gear to bed in case somebody breaks in. And by Jove, it worked. I mean, it worked so well they even hooked a hobbit Aussie, a, a commando, to make Tarkov his whole personality for the next six years. And just like that, the bait and switch was successful. The LARPers believed that they were playing a hardcore tactical shooter, when in actuality, they were playing an arcade shooter, designed for little freak goblin kids who play Call of Duty and Fortnite. And much like a mother with a heroin addiction, these LARPers passed on their addiction to their communities, growing the game's player base even further. I mean, the addiction was so strong that it attracted backyard scientists, the sick, the clowns, and the generally infirm. That's professional marketing, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I need to tell you a story to set the stage of what comes next, the game design. As Nikita saw the money trickle in for his beautiful little arcade shooter, he knew eventually players would catch on to the fact that they were actually playing an arcade shooter and not a tactical one as he had been falsely advertising. Behind his desk, he popped out his keyboard and banged up some tasks that he passed on to his developers and said, hey, guys, developer people, I need you to make the most tedious systems and anti-player mechanics. The ammo, damage, and bullet statistics? Take that out of the game, make people look it up separately, and also get really mad at data miners when players want to know things. Long queue times. Make sure that each player's stamina drains on hit so that they walk around like a chicken with their head cut off. We have 20,000 players playing right now, we'll make it so that there's only four Saluas globally for them to buy on restock. We have to make sure there's scarcity, it is an apocalypse after all, and this game's pretty hardcore. Oh shit, they're being pushed by enemy players or AI. Well, make make the, the animation canceling ludicrously long, like your player, like the character doesn't value his life whatsoever. While we're at it with the very specific character mechanics, let's also make it so that the PMCs cannot shoot well. I know I said they're trained. Don't don't question my don't question my process. Make it so that they have terrible aim. Uh, and contrarily, contrarily, because this game's hardcore, make it so that the uh, AI and bosses have god-tier aim. Yeah, thank you guys. Also, we have some cheaters in our game, so in I, I know I said that I want this to be a team-based game. We want people to play together with their friends, but let's introduce RMT mechanics where you can't actually help your friends. And you, maybe you can you can drop some things. You can drop him meds. Actually, you can also drop him a slick and ammo. But if you drop him a key, uh, we're going to ban that guy. Maybe throw in some aim punch so they can't really see when they're being shot and blur their whole screen. Make it shaky, we like that. How about also hidden zeroing mechanics to where the gun automatically internally zeroes to the first bullet type you put in. Let's do that and also don't tell that to the player. Also, you know what's pretty hardcore? Weapon malfunctions. Weapon malfunctions that can be completely negated by just buying a new receiver every two raids. That shit to me, that right here, look at me, look at me, that's hardcore. And so, with that, off the little coders went. Beep boop, plink plink, blah blah, bloop bloop, coding coding, I am smart, and beep boop, beep boop. And there it was. Those mechanics had been added to the game. But would it work? Surely the masses would see through the ruse that was these pseudo-hardcore features that are actually just bad game design. And then it was happening. They came from everywhere, out of every crevice, bush, sewer, and parents' basement. 
The crayon eaters rejoiced and screamed realism or skill issue to the dissenters. Nikita couldn't believe it. Where were they all coming from? Much like the Dark Souls player base that overemphasizes their skill when their game just requires them to hit circle, all the new little talk of players slapped the golden elitism sticker to their forehead and proudly proclaimed, I'm better than you because I play a game where I write, peek, run in circles, and abuse audio. That makes me hardcore, realistic, and better than you. And with that, Nikita had done it. He'd convinced an entire generation of gamers that because they played his game, they were better than Fortnite gamers. Anyway, so after that, Nikita like took a bunch of money, bought a car, a tank, probably a jet, and then like the hookers blow, flipped everyone off, and flew away. Uh, back to the review. I do find that something that players don't bring up enough is the way that the game is catered towards streamers. I feel like that's a very underrated feature. One of those pieces, specifically with the game design, are those queue times. What other game gives streamers such downtime to interact with their chat? Not one, and I'm not even going to fact check that. I'm going to say it as truth, and someone's going to believe me. That's the internet, and you're a crayon eater. Another beautiful piece of design that is really not talked about enough are the artificially modified spawn rates of items that you need at the beginning of a wipe and not telling players about that. That's fucking sick. That's mint. Gas analyzers, you need those? Let's completely change the spawns, put them on one map and one location, and don't tell anybody, and then mock and gaslight the community when we say, please let these things spawn. You know what else? People need GPUs. We have tasks for that. That's good. That's good design. Make them so they don't spawn in PCs anymore, but also don't tell anyone and don't acknowledge it's a bug for over a year. Perfection. That's hardcore. You know what else? We don't want people getting bored while they're working through our inventories or our market system. Add captures. You know, little brain ticklers to keep people on their toes, just so they feel stimulated and involved in our tactical shooter. That isn't arcade, don't say that. It's not arcade, trust me. My god, I'm gonna come. Yeah, and players are probably getting too much money too quickly. How about we uh, move all the loot to just two maps? Let's put them on Loot House and, and Streets of Tarkov, the new map that only 1% of our players' hardware can handle. Yeah, <laughs> that's hardcore. Oh my goodness, are players getting to endgame too quickly? <laughs> Make them reload the Mosin 4,000 times to get sniper skill, and also modify the sniper skill leveling so that it doesn't even work the way they used to or the way our test doesn't even Well, here we are at the end. <laughs> you know, this is the hardest part of any review for me, is coming up with the negatives when you're talking about a gem like Escape from Tarkov with developers like Battle State Games. I toiled for many long hours, and I took... Many long strolls in the moonlight trying to come up with something, just just one something negative to say about Tarkov. Its craftsmanship, game mechanics, AI, and task design are what we in the industry call bulletproof. I mean, what is there to critique? And then, and then it came to me, clear as day. I mean, how could I have missed it? Of, of course, but... It was because I was blinded by what I see in the mirror daily. I mean, it's the objective of Tarkov. I mean, and it's so out of touch in 2023. I mean, this might have flown in 2013, but not today. I mean, what's the, what's the one factor that ties scabs, bosses, rogues, cultists, bears, and usex all together? They're all white males. Tarkov is filled with probably cis white males. There's no diversity. I believe in equal rights. I mean, it's 2023. Where, where are the women, Nikita? Does you not like women, Nikita? Can you not handle... Th there's women, Nikita? If they can handle menstrual cramps, then they can handle 7mm buckshot to their head, comma, eyes. The remainder of this review has been censored by the request of the CCP. Thank you. The game is okay. I'd give it about a 6 out of 10.